Hey everybody, welcome back. This is the fifth video in functions and what I'm going to show you today is something that is either going to blow your mind, it's going to make you look at me and say, I have no idea what, was it, what you're doing here. Or number three, you're going to say, I know what you're doing, but it's really not that interesting. So I'm in the first group because I think it's really cool uh, what you can do with Python. And I think it's pretty cool what you can do in other languages that have a similar feature. And there's actually a bunch of languages that don't have this feature, and they're adding this on and on uh, as functional programming becomes more, uh, I guess, more popular or more useful. So enough of me talking about this thing I'm going to do, and let's actually do it. So let's use this as an example, and I'm going to say val1 and val2, and then I'm going to say return val1 plus val2. And at this point, you should be able to do this no problem. I'm going to say 5 and 2 in here, run this, and I get 7. Yay, we made a function that adds two numbers. Well, not really too interesting here because we've done this before. But let's make another function. Let's make a function called that. do something foo val1 val2. And I'm going to make this more explicit, meaning I'm going to write out something that's a little more verbose or more code just to make the point more clear. All right, so what is this? Well, we have a function called do something. And this function definition shows us that we have three parameters. We've got foo, val1, and val2. That's normal. We can have whatever names we want for a function. But we'll, let's look at how we use these values now. The first parameter, this foo, is actually a function. So you notice it's foo has a function, and it, and it itself takes two parameters, two arguments. And I put val1 and val2 in there. And it's supposed to return me a value that becomes the result, and then I return the result. Okay, so now you're looking at this saying, well, I have a function called foo, but where the heck is foo? Well, foo is a function, but it hasn't yet been created or hasn't yet been determined what foo is a function of. So what does that mean? Well, it means that foo is kind of like a blank slate. And foo can become any function that you want as long as that function takes two parameters. All right, so if that function takes two parameters, I can change foo into that function. It's kind of like a chameleon function, you know, like those chameleons, the lizards that change, their skin changes color to suit the situation. Well, foo is a function that takes two parameters that can fit itself to any situation where the function needs to take two parameters. So what function do I have that takes two parameters? Well, I have sum up right here, it takes two parameters. So let's try calling do something. Do something. And when you pass this in, when you pass a function, you just use the name. You don't use, you don't put anything like this, or you don't even put numbers. You don't do this either, val1, val2, and try to pass it in like that. You just give it the name of the function. So this is saying, hey, I've got a function called this, and I'm going to send it to you, and you're going to use it. And let's do 5 and 2 again, because we got 7 last time. So this time, we should also get 7. So if I run this, I get 7. Yay! Okay, so what is this doing? Well, when you call the function, foo becomes equal to sum up. So now foo is sum up. So really, this is just me like writing sum up right here. And then it does it, it returns the result, and brings it back here. Okay. But I don't want to use it just for this. And the cool thing is, is now what I can do is I can use any function that takes two parameters and put it in here. So for example, pow is a function that's built into Python that takes two parameters. And if I run this, I get five to the power of two. It, it puts pow here and I get five to the power of two. And if I put div mod, I get two and one because two goes into five two times with one left over. And if I create another function, if I even created a function called, uh, I don't know, 
let's call it product up just to keep the up theme going and this function returned val1 times val2 I could then change this to product up and it would do that and it would multiply these two numbers together so now the do something function becomes kind of this wrapper it like wraps around all functions that do um, that have two parameters that do anything with two parameters and you could even do something like this in here so let's say I say foo val to val one and we could say call this now double function and if I do double function in here it's going to take product up and it's gonna double whatever the result is so I get 20 and if I change this to be pow I get 50 because this would be 25 plus 25 and if I make this sum up this would be 14 because it's gonna be 14 plus you know and so on so this idea that you can use a function and you can pass it into another function is actually pretty cool so if I did foo1 and foo2 I could actually pass two functions into the same thing so it could be sum up and product up okay and I could make this foo1 and foo2 and if I ran this I'd get 17 or I could I don't know use pow for one and then I get 32 all right so this this idea is actually really powerful and there's a lot of different ways you can use this uh, that are much more useful than what I'm doing here uh, but as I as I say this you know is probably not too useful for you in a high school setting this is an advanced more advanced topic uh, but just recognize that this is something you can do and it's pretty cool that you can actually do it so play with this uh, there'll be some examples in the practice exercises in this section that do this but they're just going to be an extension and they won't actually be part of the, the core assignment this is not a core understanding for a low level programming class or a lower level programming class or introductory programming class all right so thanks for watching if you have any questions or comments on this please leave it in the youtube section or on my website all right, uh, see you in the next video.